When you compare a game on its launch day to what it becomes a few years down the road, the comparison is usually night and day. For Final Fantasy XIV, that sentiment holds true for several of the jobs that were overhauled in the 4.0 Stormblood update. Today we're going to look at the new skills the Summoner received in addition to how its existing skills were changed. Let's get started. Every class in the 4.0 update received a job gauge. For the Summoner, those gauges are used to represent Aether Flow, Aether Trail Attunement, Dreadworm Trance, and Dreadworm Aether. These are all core mechanics for the summoner, and with them on the job gauge instead of on your buffs bar, it's easier to discern their status at a glance. Dreadworm Trance received some minor changes in patch 4.0. It now resets the cast time on Tri Disaster, a spell that applies both of your damage over time spells in a single instant cast. And Tri Disaster also received an additional effect called Ruination, which increases the potency of your ruin spells by 20. It's a small change, but it influences the gameplay loop of the summoner. The more you learn about the job, the more ways you'll find to optimize all of its unique mechanics. At level 62, you unlock your first new trait and ability, Ruin Mastery and Ruin 4. Whenever your pet uses an action, there's a 15% chance your Ruin 1 and 3 will upgrade to Ruin 4. There's a lot of randomness in this skill, so depending on your luck, you won't be casting this beautiful looking spell often or you'll be casting it all the time. Overall, this trait isn't a huge impact on how the summoner plays, but it does give you something extra to pay attention to. It also connects with your level 68 trait, Enhanced Enkindle. Every time your Ruin Mastery procs, the cooldown of Enkindle is reduced by 10 seconds. Because Enkindle has a hefty and arguably unnecessary 3 minute cooldown, this trait means you'll either be using Enkindle more, or if you're unlucky, at a nearly identical rate. One of the more interesting changes to the summoner was the removal of one of their three main damage over time spells, or dots. This was done to simplify dot management and at level 66 it becomes even simpler. Corruption Mastery upgrades Bio 2 and Miasma into Bio 3 and Miasma 3. Both dots last for 30 seconds and deal 50 potency of damage every tick. You might think both dots needing reapplication every 30 seconds is boring, but the addition of Tri Disaster and the Ruination buff and the reset mechanic attached to Dreadworm Trance gives you ways to optimize your dot applications more than just making sure they don't get reapplied too soon. The Summoner's pets have always been an integral part of its gameplay. They received some minor changes in 4.0 as well as a new skill. Ifrit's Radiant Shield now applies a very small physical vulnerability debuff whenever the shield is struck. Additionally, it deals a very small counterattack whenever damage is suffered by a target with the shield. Garuda's Contagion used to extend the duration of your dots, but it's been changed into a caster's wet dream. It increases the target's magic damage taken by 10% for 15 seconds with a 60 second cooldown. The new ability all of your pets share is called Devotion, and it's activated by using Aether Pact. This grants the closest target to your pet a 5% bonus to their healing output, damage output, and reduces their damage taken by 5%. It's unfortunate that you can't control the target that receives the buff, but because it increases damage, healing output, and damage reduction, your pet can't make a truly wrong choice. But it can make less than optimal decisions. The summoner's level 70 skill is called Summon Bahamut, and surprise surprise, it lets you summon Bahamut. Summoning Bahamut costs 2 Dreadworm Aether, which is accumulated every time you exit Dreadworm Trance. Activating Summon Bahamut calls him to fight by your side for 20 seconds, but unlike normal pets, he only uses his primary attack, Worm Wave, when you use an action on a target. Additionally, he can cast Worm Wave every 1.5 seconds, which means you can optimize the number of waves he casts by calling him in tandem with Aether Flow. A summon without Aether Flow usually gives me 7 waves, but with Aether Flow, I've gotten up to 10. I believe the maximum is 12, but I haven't figured that out yet. Additionally, Bahamut can be commanded to cast Akmorn an extremely powerful area attack every 13 seconds. Because he stays on the field for 20 seconds, he can use this twice before he leaves. The additions and changes that were made to the summoner make it feel very different from what it once was. 
While its primary focus is still maintaining its damage over time spells while filling in the gaps with low potency ruin spells, that loop feels more engaging because of the reset mechanic on Dreadworm Trance, the changes to Tri Disaster, and the constant building up to summon Bahamut. And finding ways to optimize all of that is a satisfying and rewarding challenge. With all of that said, the name of the game is Final Fantasy XIV. The name of the channel is iBlueAir JGR Gaming for Comedy. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave a comment because I read all of them, but more importantly, if you don't, you won't get anything for Christmas, Hanukkah, or Kwanzaa this year. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.